Hey guys, how are you? I'm Uncle Steph. So, what should every web developer become comfortable with? Is it algorithms? Is it data structures? Nope. It's string manipulation and, well, strings. So what exactly are strings? Strings are just strings of text. Words, right? Banana, Ruby, JavaScript, these are all strings. They, that, they, then, what, whatever. You get the idea. Strings of text. Why should web developers become comfortable working with strings of text? Because as a web developer, most of the work is going to be moving strings of text from forms that people fill in th through uh, your middle layer of code where you, you process all those strings of text to make sure that they put in their email address properly. There's no nefarious code in there to try to mess up your SQL database, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then you store this in the database. And then later on, when somebody comes and visits the site again, you're going to pull all that text, those strings of text out of your database and then display it in the web page. So that's pretty much a big part of web development is working with strings of text. So it stands to reason that you should become familiar with that data type. Strings are a data type. And you should be able to uh, work with them fairly comfortably. What you find is that every programming language, all the modern ones anyway, JavaScript, Java, PHP, Python, C Sharp, etc., they all have built-in string manipulating functions and or methods. Uh, these are basically just little mini programs inside of the languages that allow you to work with strings, you know, to extract particular words from sentences, to uh, take off trailing white space, to add white space, to split up sentences into the individual words, into arrays, and all kinds of, all kinds of other types of uh, things you might want to do with uh, strings of text. Again, they call it strings because they are strings of text, you know, text A, B, C, D, you know. Anyhow, so string manipulation is part of the day-to-day -day, uh, operations in which you, you know, you're going to be involved with as a web designer, web developer. So it's good to understand strings and the methods and the functionality that languages have built in to manipulate these things. Now, like everything else, I don't expect you to go out there and learn every single string method there is in a, in a language. That would be a waste of time. Just learn the big ones and uh, you know, to make things uppercase, lowercase, to uh, to make capitalized text, to, to uh, strip out trailing white space, etc. All the basic stuff that you're probably going to need to do from time to time to look for particular characters in a string. So for example, let's say you're validating email addresses. One thing that you might want to do is check for that at symbol and a period in that string of text that would be the email address, just to make sure that the, the people entering the email address are entering in at least a properly formed email address string. Uh, that's just one simple example. If you want to take it to a high level in terms of string manipulation, there is, I guess I would call it a meta language or a sub language that everybody has in their main programming language. And what I'm talking about is something called regular expressions. People call this regex, and it's basically a very, very powerful way in which you can uh, process strings. It's super powerful. It goes way beyond the built-in methods that you see in programming languages, but it's a whole it's a whole new way of thinking about string manipulation, and it's pretty archaic stuff, uh, but it's very powerful. Again, what I would do after you finish your basic study of string manipulation in a language, just learn the very basics of regex uh, and how it's implemented, how you create a pattern, what a pattern is and then how you apply that to a string of text and how you get a result. And that's pretty much all you need for now so that you're aware that regex exists, how it works, and you're also aware of the basic string manipulation 
uh, capabilities of a programming language that you happen to be working with, um, JavaScript, Java, etc. And uh, so when you come across a situation where you need to do a little bit more advanced string manipulation, you'll know, hmm, can I do this with the built-in functionality of the language or do I have to go into regex? There you go. That's my two cents on string manipulation and why you should learn it as a web developer. Again, reason number one is that in your day-to-day -day work as a web developer, you will be writing a lot of code that manipulates strings because at the end of the day, most of the work has to do with collecting information, which is text inf information, which is basically a bunch of strings, processing that text, storing it in databases, and then pulling it out of databases and processing the text again, formatting it according to the needs of the job. And there you go. That's pretty much it. Uh, databases will be the next thing to get into deeper, I suppose. Yeah, string manipulation, databases, far more important than algorithms and data structures for web development. If you are a total beginner in web development, I'm going to shamelessly self-promote my book. I have courses. You can look below. I have interactive, gamified, video-based, uh, gamified courses, much more advanced than just watching videos. If you want to learn how to code at a professional level, check those out. I also have a mentoring program if you want to get the full Uncle Steph experience. I also have a book. I wrote this book several years ago, but I wrote it to be evergreen. Every single thing that I cover in here is 100% used today, even though I wrote this in 215, 216, believe it or not. Why? Teaching HTML5, CSS3, layout, teaching a little bit about frameworks, etc. But again, by design, everything I wrote in here is evergreen. Why? Because HTML5 and CSS3, uh, they haven't changed much since that time, if at all. Anyhow, recommend this book. I don't make any money on this book anymore. The way it works with the publisher, they give me my upfront, and that's pretty much it. Um, so if you like to read, otherwise check out my courses below. And let me end with this. I used to do this in the past, but so I'm an old guy compared to you guys. Um, so I have a different uh, perspective on music. I grew up with different music. I'm not saying it's better, it's just different. Uh, so one of the most important albums in music history, I don't think people talk about much these days, is this album here. This is the Beatles' Revolver and represents uh, their deep dive into psychedelic music. And they got some amazing tracks on here, like Eleanor, Eleanor Rigby and Taxman. Highly recommend. You can get it on, you know, whatever, on YouTube, whatever. Beatles Revolver, listen to this. And I think you'll be very impressed with some of the music on here. Very, very progressive for it today. All right, that's it for now. Bye-bye.